I'm happy to be here this morning. And God wants to bless all of you. Now the message I'm going to talk, uh, give pray this morning is about the balance of God's grace and His law. Aha, ujumbe ambao ningelipenda kuzungumzia siku ya leo ni jinsi ya kuweka kwenye mzani neema ya Mungu na sheria ya Mungu kwamba zitoshane moja isikuwe kubwa juu ya nyingine. How to live in God's love and be motivated by God's love to obey his law. Jinsi ya kuishi katika upendo wa Mungu na jinsi unavyoweza kuchochewa ili ukaishi katika upendo wa Mungu. And I'm going to say that this message I hope you will keep in your heart because it can transform your life. Nataka kusema kwamba ujumbe huu natumai utaweka kwenye moyo wako maana yake unaweza kubadilisha maisha yako. It can help you to be joyful and peaceful and have strength all the time. Yaani ujumbe huu unaweza kukusaidia ukawe mtu wa furaha, ukawe mtu wa nguvu kila wakati. It can also help your relationship with people that you can have more love and concern with for people inaweza kusaidia hata mahusiano yako na watu ya kwamba utakuwa mtu wa kuwajali hata watu wengine and not be affected by people na kwamba hautaadhiriwa na watu okay now let me say this wachanisemi hivi when we compare men and god there is a big big difference unapo basi anza ku kulinganisha mungu na mwanadamu unapata kwamba kuna utofauti mkubwa zaidi in Isaiah, the book of Isaiah says that for high as the heaven is above the earth, so you know, so far is his way, his his way and his uh uh kwenye kitabu cha Isaiah maandiko yasema kwamba njia za Mungu na mawazo ya Mungu yako juu zaidi kushinda ya mwanadamu. That human just have all kinds of problems. Ya kwamba mwanadamu ako na matatizo yote. And then if we understand the problems of people and understand the greatness of God, unapoelewa matatizo ya mwanadamu na uelewe ukuu wa Mungu, then we can hold on to God to have strength. Sasa unaweza ukamkamata Mungu kwa nguvu zote. Now first let me ask you this. Wacha basi nikuulize hivi. When you are with people, do you find that people usually very easily accuse us? Je, unapokuwa na watu Unapona kwamba ni rahisi kwamba mtu anaweza kuumiza ama anakuongelesha maneno machungu zaidi. For instance with your spouse, the spouse may say, "Why didn't you wash the dishes? Why didn't you listen to me?" Kwa mfano katika nyumba mke na mume, mume anaweza kumwambia mke, "Mbona haujaosha vyombo? Mbona haujafagia nyumba?" Or complain in different things. Ama unapata mtu huyu anaanza kulalamika juu ya vitu tofauti. Even when we have improved and worked on something, they will say there is still a lot of things you haven't done. Hata ijapokuwa mtu amejaribu kufanya kadri ya uwezo wake, lakini bado mwingine ataanza kulalamika kumwambia kwamba haujafanya vizuri sehemu hii nyingine. Because his human nature to look at the negative things. Kwa sababu ni uwasilia wa mwanadamu kutazama mambo kinyume ya mwanadamu. Now I'm going to compare people and God in a few ways. Nataka basi kumfananisha mwanadamu na Mungu katika mifano mbalimbali. People like to accuse. Watu wanapenda kuchokozana. For instance a child did very badly in school. Kwa mfano mwanao anaweza kuwa na tabia mbaya kule shuleni. He improved a little bit na kwa njia nyingine labda anabadilika kidogo. The parents could say wow you have improved. Mzazi angelisema ha umejaribu sana. But usually there's a tendency for the parents to say, well there is still a long way for you to go. Lakini like proud. Lakini like sisi kama wazazi ijapo kuwa mtoto amejaribu kufanya vizuri, huwa hatumsaidie tuseme kwamba kwa kweli umefanya vizuri. Tunasema kwamba haujafanya vizuri, weka bidii zaidi. Because people like to look at what we have not done. Kwa sababu watu wanapenda kutazama yale ambayo hatujayafanya. Now when we become a Christian, we are supposed to live under the love of God. Na tunapofanyika wa Kristo so ya tupasa tukaishi chini ya upendo wa Mungu. But it's still very common for Christians to accuse. Lakini ni kawaida kwamba mwanadamu kazi yake yeye ni kuzungumza mambo kinyume tu. Let me see what's happening. Yeah, it's fine. It's that's fine. When this red ball, it's okay. Okay. Okay, stop it and then restart this. When there's red ball, but you can move it and zoom in and zoom out. Okay. Now 
in the church supposedly people say, wow, you have grown in Jesus Christ, you have served God. Aha, basi kanisani natupasa sisi wa Kristo tuseme kwamba kwa kweli umefanya vizuri kuwakoka unaweza kumtumikia Mungu. But sometimes people will say, wow, there is you you are not doing well enough. Lakini watu wengi watasema, ah, wewe bana haujafanya vizuri. You are too weak. Kwamba wewe ni mdhaifu mno. You haven't prayed enough. Wewe haujaomba vya kutosha. Now that could be true. Yawezekana ni ukweli. But when people accuse each other, it like, causes people to feel discouraged. Wakati unapoendelea kumwangalisha mtu maneno kinyume, mtu huyu unamshusha roho. And also in the family a lot of times a spouse would complain and accuse. Na sasa hata katika familia utapata kwamba mambo ya kushushana roho yako ni mengi mno. When I went to different countries in the world I find it very common that husbands and wives don't have good relationship. Yeye anapozuru mataifa tofauti mengi anapata kwamba hasua sana mataifa haya ya Afrika mume na mke hawananga yale mahusiano mazuri. Because generally the women like the men to talk to them and listen to them kwa sababu wanaume wanataka tu wanawake wanataka waume tu waongeleshe wao wakisikiliza. But men usually don't like to listen too much. Na hao wanaume unapoangalia hivi hawapendi kusikiliza upande wa kina mama so the wife would complain and nay sasa unapata masaa ya usiku mwanamke analalamika sana and then the husband would not like her because she talks too much na sasa huyu mwanaume hatampenda yule mke manake mkewe naye ni kamdomo domo and if i say well someone else wife is better sasa utapata mwanaume wewe anaanza kusema he bibi ya nani ni mzuri kuliko wewe let me ask you this question have you noticed the people around you like to accuse hebu nikuulize ushawahi kuwa na watu kando kando au majirani wako ambao kazi yao ni kuongea maneno tu kinyume hawaongei maneno mazuri and how does it make you feel inakufanya unahisi namna gani right Now let me tell you I'm going to compare few areas of men with God and we can see how wonderful God is. Basi tunataka tufananishe kwa mifano kidogo tofauti wa Mungu na mwanadamu alafu taona vile ilivyokuwa nzuri mno. Now God is very high standard. God is very high standard. Mungu ana viwango vya juu zaidi. He can easily look at us and say look at us and say you have reached the standard you're so low anaweza kuangalia akiwa kule juu na aseme kwamba nyinyi kama wanadamu hamjafanya vizuri kufikia viwango vya Mungu but God is not like that lakini Mungu huwa hasemi hivyo he know that all of us cannot reach the standard anajua kwamba sisi sote hatuwezi tukafikia viwango vyake and any time we want to come close to him the bible says when we come close to him he will come close to us na wakati mwingi maandiko yanasema kwamba unapomsongelea mungu mungu naye anasonga karibu na wewe and then when we pray excuse me hello hello this thing okay And then when we love God, God will say this. Na tunapompenda Mungu, Mungu atasema hivi. That the Bible says that God has prepared for those who love him what he has prepared. His eyes have not seen, the ears have not heard, and the human heart has not thought of. Maandiko nasema kwamba yale ambao Mungu amewaandalia wanadamu ni mambo ambayo macho ya mwanadamu hayajaona, mawazo ya mwanadamu hayajawaza, moyo wa mwanadamu hauwezi ukayafahamu. So when we say God I love you. Wakati unapoposema kwamba Mungu nakupenda. God is very happy. Mungu anakuwa na furaha zaidi. And he prepare for us things we have never seen. Na atatuandalia vitu ambavyo hatujawahi ona. Also when people serve God. Wakati wa Mungu wakati watu wanapomtumikia Mungu. Very often other people will say well your sermon is not so good. Aha hata kama ni mchungaji anahubiri watu wanasema ah ujumbe wake si mzuri hauvutii tunazinzia kanisani akihubiri. Or when they you know it's easy for people to complain about people who serve God. Ya kwamba ni rahisi sana watu kuanza kulalamika juu ya watu ambao wanamfanyia Mungu kazi. But Jesus said this in Matthew 10:42. Lakini Yesu anasema haya katika Mathayo 10 mstari wa 42. Mathayo sura ya 10 mstari wa 42. Now you can write this down the verses I'm going to use. Aha, utaandika mstari hizi chini. Okay? Here it says that whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, surely I will tell you 
that he shall know by no means lose his reward. Ya kwamba yule yeyote ambaye atapeana kikombe cha maji baridi kwa yule mdogo kwa jina la Kristo Yesu hatapoteza thawabu yake. What it says here is even if we are not such a, you know, a great disciple and serving God in many ways, ya kwamba ijapokuwa kazi ambazo za kumtumikia Mungu hatuzifanyi hatuzifanyi kazi kubwa zaidi when we willing to give a cup of power to a little one. Ya kwamba when we willing to give a cup. Kama uko tayari tu kupeana kikombe cha maji baridi kwa yule mdogo wako. Let me ask you, can you do it? J. Unaweza kumpa tu mtu maji ya kunywa kikombe tu kimoja kikuomba? Can you do it to give a cup of cold water? Munaweza fine. Yes. And then Jesus said, you will by no means lose your reward. Na Yesu anasema unapofanya hivyo, hautapoteza kile ambacho amekuandalia. Now there might be many things in our life that we're not doing well. Kunaweza kana kunawezekana tuwe na vitu vingi maisha yetu ambavyo hatufanyi vizuri. Of course we we cannot do things well. We we should come to God and repent. Ndio hatuwezi tukafanya mambo yote sawa lakini natupidi tuje mbele za Mungu na tutubu. And the Bible says if one person repents the whole heaven rejoices. Maandiko yanasema kwamba mtu mmoja anapotubu tu mbingu yote inashangilia. So when we cannot do what God wants us to do, we repent, truly repent from our heart. God is very happy. Ya kwamba kama hatuwezi kufanya mambo yetu mazuri lakini tunatubu, Mungu anakuwa na furaha. Now very often we think of God like a police officer. Wakati mwingi sisi kama wanadamu tunafikiria tunawaza Mungu tunamfananisha na askari. Or think of him like a school principal. Ama tunamfananisha kama mwalimu mkuu wa shule. Think that he is watching over everyone. Ya kwamba anakuangalia na kuchunga kila wakati. Now he is watching over everyone. It's true. Ndio ni ukweli anatuchunga sisi na kutazama kila wakati. But he watch over everyone with a gracious heart. Lakini yeye anatuchunga katika moyo wa neema. When we give a cup of cold water, he is very happy. Unapopeana kikombe cha maji baridi Mungu anakuwa na furaha. Now in my understanding of God from the Bible, katika kuelewa kwangu kumhusu Mungu katika maandiko, I can see that God is full of wisdom. Nimeona kwamba Mungu anayo hekima kuu. And he is almighty, he is very high. Na yeye ni mkuu na yuko juu zaidi. But his response to people who love him are like a little child. Lakini vile anavyoitikia kwa wale wanaompenda ni ni sample ya vile mwana mtoto mdogo huwa anafurahia mzazi wake. When your children are young, wakati wanao ni wadogo, when they see you come home, wakikuona mama ukirejea, they will come to you like this. Watakimbia kwako wakija kusema mama hicho lolo mama hicho lolo. But when they grow up they might not do it. Lakini wanapokuwa wakiwa watu wazima hawatafanya hivyo. Because little children are very simple. Kwa sababu watoto wadogo wako rahisi tu hivyo. And I want to say that God has very complicated wisdom. Nataka kusema kwamba hekima ya Mungu ni hekima ambayo hatuwezi tukaifahamu. But his response is very simple. Lakini kuitikia kwake ni kwepesi mno. Whenever we do things according to his will, tunapofanya mambo kulingana mapenzi ya Mungu. He's happy like a child. Yeye ana furaha kama mtoto. And I give you a verse to support that. Zephaniah 3:17. Kwenye kitabu cha Safania 3:17 3:17 Kwenye kitabu cha Zephania 3 mstari wa 17 Zephania 3 mstari wa 17 Okay this verse is very precious Mstari huu ni wa dhamana zaidi The second part of this verse says Sehemu ya pili kwenye huu mstari nasema hivi He will take great delight in you He will quiet you with his love He will rejoice over you with singing ya kwamba atakufurahia atakulinda kwa upendo wake na atakufurahia katika nyimbo zako There is says that God takes great delight in us he likes us very much Inamaanisha kwamba huyu Mungu anatupenda zaidi zaidi Now one thing about people is it's hard for people to like other people. E kitu kingine ambacho tumegundua kwa watu ni vigumu sana watu kuwapenda watu wengine. If people like other people they want usually want to get something from them. Ukipata mtu anajifanya kwamba anakupenda ako na lengo. Anataka kupata ka kitu kutoka kwako. For instance when a young man see a beautiful lady and he is attracted and he likes that girl 
Aha, sikiliseni hivi sasa. Kwa mfano, kijana anapoona binti mzuri mrembo ameugwa akaumbika amejipodoa podupodu, anamjidanganya kwamba anampenda. What does he want to get from the girl? Unafikiria ni kitu gani anatafuta kwenye huyu binti? Usually he want to get sex from the girl. Ni kwa sababu anataka tu kufanya mapenzi na huyu msichana. Even if he marries the girl, hata kama atamua huyu binti, he wants her to do a lot of work for him. Aha, atamua lakini atamwachia majukumu mengi ya nyumba. He wants her to serve him. Ayani huyu bwana kisha muua mke wake, sasa atakuwa mfalme na huyu atakuwa mfanyikazi. Usually when someone wants to marry someone, he does not say this. Aha, wakati mtu anataka kumuoa mtu, huanga hasemi haya. He does not say I want to make you very happy every day. Aha, vipindi vya kwanza atakuwa anataka nikufanye uishi maisha ya furaha kila wakati. I'll care about you every day. Nitakujali kila wakati. I'll make I do whatever I can do for you. Nitafanya chochote kile ambacho naweza kufanya kwa ajili yako. Now, people don't usually say that. Watu huwa wasemi hivyo. People usually say you know, oh, she's beautiful. Aha, watu wanasema kwamba ai huyu anavutia. I feel happy with her. Ya kwamba nikiwa na yeye nasikia moyo wangu unajawa na furaha. So you want to get something from her. Ina maana kwamba huyu jamaa kuna kitu ame target anataka kupata. And then when she does not do what he wants, na sasa kama huyu msichana hatafanya kile ambacho huyu kijana anataka, he will start to dislike her. Ataanza kumchukia. And this why before marriage a lot of times they like each other. Before marriage, very often they like it. Kabla hawa watu waowani, wanakuwa na upendo wa hali ya juu. But after marriage, they start to request. Lakini sasa... Thank you so much. Yes. Just said it, it's okay. It doesn't have to be. Lakini sasa, wakisha ingia katika ndoa, unapata kwamba... You stop it and restart it now. Stop it and restart it. It's okay. If you can include more space. Thank you. Is it recording now? Please. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now, so when even when people like a beautiful girl or a handsome man, they want to get something from them. Kwa hivyo, unapopata mtu na jifanya kwamba mempenda binti fulani, ana inamanisa kwamba kuna kitu ambacho anataka kupata kutoka kwa ke. And then when they find a person that's what he wants, then he'll be happy. Na sasa, huyo mtu wakisha pata kile ambacho na kitafuta, atakuwa na furaha. But the moment she starts to nag on unhappy, then he will get angry with her. Na sasa mtu anapozidi kuendelea utaanza huyu mtu ule upendo aliyekuwa nao unaanza kupotea. Now for me with my wife, yeye na mkewe, I always want to make her happy. Yeye huwa anajaribu kumfurahisha mkewe because I treasure what God has given me. Kwa sababu anakijali kile ambacho Mungu amempa. I treasure the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Yeye pia anajali kule kujazwa kwa Roho Mtakatifu alikojazwa. I treasure what God is working in my life. Anajali vile Mungu anavyofanya katika maisha yake. Any time I pray I can experience his joy. Wakati wote anapoomba anahisi furaha ya Mungu. Any time I think of Jesus his joy will come. Wakati anapofikiria kuhusu Kristo furaha inakuja. And I find that when I pray for people many people experience the work of God. Na sasa amegundua kwamba anapowaombea watu watu wanaanza kumuhisi Mungu. And God has given me many good teachings. Na Mungu amempa mafundisho mengi mazuri. So I really like God. Ya kwamba yeye amempenda Mungu zaidi. And I want to make the best of my life. Na anataka kutengeneza mazuri ya maisha yake. My, I want my marriage to be the best. Anataka ndoa yake ikuwe nzuri zaidi. So that I can make her happy and she makes me happy. Ili amfanye mkewe akuwe na furaha na pia yeye naye awe na furaha. And we can support each other. Na tuna wanaweza kushaidia. So whatever I do, I try to follow God's will. Kwa hivyo chochote anachokifanya najaribu kufuata mapenzi ya Mungu. Because I know God is very very good. Kwa sababu anajua Mungu ni mwema na mzuri zaidi. He is not like people who just demand of other people. Mungu sio kama mwanadamu ambaye anataka tu kupata vitu kutoka kwa watu. And here in Zephaniah 3:17. Na hapa kwenye kitabu cha Safania sura ya 3 mstari wa 17, it says he takes great delight Inasema kwamba Mungu anafurahishwa ndani mwetu. He is very happy with us. Yana Mungu ako na furaha na sisi. Especially when we love him and obey him. Haswa sasa tunapompenda na kumtii. And he quiets us with his love. Na yeye sasa anatuchunga kwa upendo wake. 
He will make us feel peaceful with his love. I thank God for the love he has given to all people. Like the mothers here, when your baby is not, you know, it's not peaceful, you would, you would uh, uh, hold the baby. And calm down the baby. And God comes to us to calm us down with his love. And he also rejoices over us with singing. Let me ask you, have you seen anyone who sees you and then they are so happy? I'm happy to see you. <laughs> Je, usha wai kutana na mtu ambaye akikuona hivi, anafurahia sana, anaanza kuimba. Nimefurahia na kupenda kukuona. Do have you seen many people when they see you they say, "Wow, I'm so happy to see you." Usha wai kutana na mtu na kuambia, "Napokuona tu hivi na kuambia, "Ai jamani nimefurahishwa kukuona." Now, because most people are not happy with other people. People like to demand of other people. So we think that God is like that too. But I want to say this. God is not like men. When we give a cup of cola, he's very happy and he'll reward us. When we come to him, he's very happy. He'll rejoice over us with singing. If we have the uh, spiritual eyes to see the face of God, do you know many people went to heaven in the prayer and they went to heaven and saw Jesus? And saw that Jesus was, you know, having a very loving face and a smiling face. Na wakaona kwamba Yesu ako na sura ya kuvutia ya kupendeza na anatabasamu nzuri zaidi. If we can see God now, kama tuweza kumuona Mungu saizi, we will see that God is very happy with us when we come to him sincerely. Utapata kujua kwamba Mungu hako na furaha sana tunapomwendea katika unyenyekevu na upole. And he rejoices over us with singing. Na sasa yeye anafurahishwa na uimbaji. And he loves us all the time. Na anatupenda but it's hard for people to love other people. Even for spouses. Most of the time they just say, I want him to make some money and bring the money back. I want her to cook and do all the things I want her to do. I want her to cook and do all the things I do husbands come to the wife and say, I'm so happy I have you. Let me ask you, the wife's here. Do your husband come to you and say, I'm so happy to have you? And I thank you for everything you've done for me. And I want to make you happy every day. they say that to you? No. <laughs> it's just not the human nature to love. Now, God can change us. But it's very sad that many people do not change some of their lifetime habits. Because most people are used to seeing their parents talking to each other roughly. Kwa mfano, ulipo kuwa mtoto, wazazi wako, waliko na gombana mbele zako ukiona. That they don't say words of love. Ya kwa mba hawa, hawa kunena maneno ya upendo. So they pick up this habit. Ya kwa mba sasa pia wewe unapo endalea, unachukua, unaiga ile tabia. Even when they believe in Jesus. Hasa kama umemuamini kristo yesu. They will not say, 
they will not learn to change and say, wow, my wife, my husband is so good to me. Utapata sasa kwa sababu ameiga ule mfano hata anapoingia kwenye ndoa hata wae kushukuru mmeo kwa mambo mazuri ya her or her. I appreciate him or her. Kumu kumshukuru mme ama mke. I want to make him or her happy. Yaani hautasikia mambo kama nimekelipenda nikufanye uwe na furaha. But let me tell you, ni mwasani kwambie, God wants to make us happy. Mungu anataka kutufanya sisi tuwe na furaha. He is not like human. Mungu sio kama mwanadamu. There is no one like him. Hakuna mwingine kama Mungu. And what God has prepared for those who love him, na kile ambacho Mungu amewaandalia wale wanaompenda, is something you never imagine. Ni kitu ambacho haujawahi wazia. Now but some people say it's too hard to love God to obey God is too hard. Watu wengi watasema kwamba hai ni ngumu sana kumpenda Mungu na kumtii Mungu ni vigumu zaidi. But I want to tell you this morning it's not hard to please God. Lakini nataka nikwambie asubuhi ya leo kwamba sio vigumu kumpendeza Mungu. But you might say his standard is so high I cannot reach. Waweza kusema kwamba viwango vyake ni vya juu wewe ukafikia. I seem to often ya kwamba iko juu zaidi. I have too much weakness. Unasema kwamba mimi ni mnyonge na mdhaifu zaidi. I cannot, you know, I cannot reach the standard of God. Kwa hivyo unasema kwamba hauwezi ukafikia viwango vya Mungu. But as I said, when we cannot do it then when we repent tuna anasema kwamba kwa sababu hatuwezi kufanya hivyo lakini unapotubu God is very happy Mungu anakuwa na furaha and the whole heaven all the angels and mbingu yote ina kuwa na furaha pia and all the saints in heaven will rejoice na hata watakatifu kule mbinguni wanaanza kushangilia na kufurahia haleluya and when we start to say yes lord i learn i want to Come to you I want to pray to you. Unaposema kwa kweli Bwana ningelipenda kuja kwako nataka nikuombe. And then God will come to us. Na Mungu atakuja kwetu sisi. And you know this when you praise and worship umeshawahi kugundua unapoimba zile nyimbo za sifa na ibada. Do you feel joyful? Unasikia una furaha wakati wa kusifu? How many you feel joyful when you praise and worship? Wangapi unasikia furaha mnapoimba mkisherekea na kushangilia? That is from God. Yaani kule ile furaha unayokuwa nayo sio yako lakini imetoka kwa Mungu. Whenever we come to him he'll come to us powerfully. Tunapomsongea Mungu naye anatusongea zaidi. Even when we don't come to him. Hata kama hatumsongei. For instance when we sin. Kwa mfano tunapo sin, sin. Kwa mfano tunapotenda dhambi. Does God forget about us and leave us? Wakati umetenda dhambi, je, Mungu huwa anakusahau na kukuacha kabisa? No, he doesn't. Hatuachi in John chapter 16 verse 8 it says that Katika Yohana sura ya 16 mstari wa 8 unasema hivyo When the Holy Spirit come he will convict the world of sin of righteousness and judgment Wakati Roho Mtakatifu atakapokuja atakuja kuhukumu ulimwengu kwa ajili ya dhambi katika utakatifu na katika haki Even before we became a Christian, hata wakati ulikuwa haujafanyika kuwa mkristo, when we hear the word of God, unapolisikia neno la Mungu, the Holy Spirit will convict us of sin. Roho Mtakatifu atakuhukumu kwa sababu ni dhambi and bring us to repentance and trust in Jesus. Roho Mtakatifu atatufanya tuende katika toba na kumwamini Kristo Yesu. And after we are born again, na wakati tumekwisha kuzaliwa mara ya pili, still very often we will sin against God. Aha, ukisha kuwa umeokoka haimaanishi kwamba hautendi dhambi. Unatenda dhambi bado. Very often Christians are lazy to pray or read the Bible. Kwa mfano wa Kristo wako na udhaifu wa kusoma Biblia ama kuomba and very often Christian will yell at each other ama kwa mfano wa Kristo watapigia wengine kelele and are not willing to love each other na hawako tayari kupendana does God forsake us je Mungu anatuacha no no hapana He will move in our hearts. Ya kwamba Mungu atafanya kazi katika mioyo zetu. Even when we disobey him. Hata ijapokuwa hatujamtii. Now in some serious cases, na kuna basi vipindi vingine ambavyo ni mbaya zaidi. Even when people commit adultery. Hata watu wanapofanya uzinzi. The Holy Spirit still works in his heart to bring mtakatifu bado anafanya kazi katika mioyo zetu to bring him to repentance. Ili kuelekeza watu hao katika toba. Now it doesn't mean it's okay to sin. It doesn't mean it's okay to sin. Haimaanishi kwamba ni vizuri tu mtu kutenda dhambi. Na when we sin when we repent God will forgive us. Tunapotenda dhambi na kutubu Mungu atakusamehe. 
But there is also there are always consequences of sin. Lakini kuna matokeo ama madhara ya dhambi. For instance, someone commit adultery. Kwa mfano mtu amefanya amefanya mambo ya usherati. It can destroy the family. Usherati huo unaweza kuharibu familia. It can destroy the reputation of the person. Inaweza kuharibu hata eh, usemi ama kuwa kwa huyo mtu. It can destroy spiritual life and this. Inaweza kuharibu hata maisha ya kiroho na hata huduma wa huo mtu. So don't think that sinning is okay. Kwa hivyo usifikirie kwamba kutenda dhambi ni kwema. Even when God, you know, when we confess our sins can we forgive us? Hata kama tutatupa dhambi zetu Mungu anatusamehe. Sins will always bring destruction and bad consequences. Dhambi zitaleta maharibifu na matokeo yake yatakuwa mabaya zaidi. But still when we confess our sin, lakini tunapokiri zile dhambi Sincerely that we are sorry for our sins. Unakiri kwa moyo wangu kwamba samahani kwa dhambi mlizozifanya. God is always happy. Mungu kila wakati anayofuraha and he rejoice over us. Na yeye anafurahia ndani mwetu. And also the whole heaven will rejoice. Na hata mbingu yote itashangilia. So I'm saying even when we are sinning when we repent we can please God. Ya kwamba tunapotenda dhambi na tunatubu bado tutampendeza Mungu. And when we pray, we please God and God will come to us. Na tunapoomba, Mungu anafurahia na atusongelea. And when we love him, he will prepare us for for us what eyes have not seen. Na sasa tunapompenda, atatuandalia mambo ambayo macho yetu hayajawaiona. And when we serve him even when we give a cup of cold water, he will always reward us. Na hata unapopeana kikombe cha maji baridi Mungu kila wakati akatupa dawa. Even when there are a lot of things we haven't done well yet. Hata kama kuna mambo mengi ambayo hatujayafanya vizuri zaidi. God will look at the little things we have done for him. Mungu ataangalia vile vidogo ambavyo tumemfanyia. When we do it with a sincere heart. Unapovifanya katika moyo ulio safi na moyo wazi. Then I say yes Lord I want to please you. Useme kama kwa kweli Mungu ningelipenda nikupendeze. God is very happy. Mungu anayefuraha. So, if we have a sincere heart, kwa hivyo tunapokuwa na moyo ambayo ni moyo mwema msafi. I want to repent and love and obey God. Ya kwamba unapenda utubu na pia ukamtii Mungu. God will always be happy. Mungu kila wakati atakuwa na furaha. So, is it easy to please God? Je, ni rahisi kumpendeza Mungu? Yes. Now, a lot of times people read the Bible and they don't look carefully into the words. Watu wanaposoma mistari ya Biblia, hawaisomi kama mmeweka maanani yao hapo. This morning when you see how I explain these Bible verses, it helps you to understand the beautiful nature of God. Asubuhi ya leo unapoona vile ninavyoeleza mistari hiyo, ninaeleza kuhusu uwasilia wa Mungu kutoka kwenye mistari. When you understand this beautiful nature of God, I hope you put it in your memory. Unapoelewa huu uwasilia wa Mungu natumai kwamba utaweka kwenye mawazo yako. And every day we will say to ourselves, na kila siku utajizungumzia, God is loving me. Mungu unanipenda. God is blessing me. Mungu unanibariki. Whatever I do for him is very happy. Chochote ninachomfanyia yeye anafuraha. And then every day we can say I can rejoice in the Lord. Na kila siku tunasema kwamba naweza kufurahia katika Bwana. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Furahia katika Bwana kila siku tena nasema furahieni. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Furahia katika Bwana kila siku tena nasema furahieni. Sasa utaimbaje kwa Kiswahili? Rejoice, rejoice. Furahia, furahia and again I say rejoice. Tena nasema furahia. Christians can enjoy the love of God. Ya kwamba wakristo wanaweza wakadumu wakafurahishwa na upendo wa Mungu. And know that God is not like people. Na wajue kwamba Mungu sio kama mwanadamu. Hello, hello. And know that God is not like people. Unajua Mungu sio kama mwanadamu. People are hard to please. Ambaye ni mgumu wa kufurahisha. But God is easy to please. Lakini Mungu ako ni mrahisi wa kufurahisha. 
But of course, when we have sinned, we La must come to God for repentance. Lakini tunapofatenda dhambi lazima tumjie Mungu katika njia ya toba. We don't think that I'm good enough. But we know that even when we're not good enough, when we come to God, God is very happy. Now I hope this changed your concept of God. To know that it's easy to please God. And it's God who always comes to seek us. In Luke chapter 17, verse 10, there it says that the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. 19, I'm sorry, it's 1910. Can you remember the time how you were brought to Jesus? Do you find that the Holy Spirit, you know, God draws different people to come to you to guide you to Jesus? He has used different people and different and, and he works in our heart to draw us to come to him. And sometimes when we were weak, God still continued to draw our heart to him. And Revelation chapter 3 says that Jesus is not always knocking at our doors. He's always trying to touch our hearts. He's always patient with us. And in Psalm 139 verse 5, there it says that the Lord is in front of me and behind me and he's laying his hand upon me. So the Lord is always with us. And he's laying his hand upon us to bless us. Therefore, we can always say, Wow, God is with me. As I said, when we sin, he still come to move in our hearts. And then when we love him, he always responds with more love. For high as the heaven is above the earth, so great is love toward those who love him. To fear him. To fear him. So God follow us every day. Mungu anatufuata kila wakati. He is moving in our heart every day. Yeye anazunguka kwenye mioyo zetu kila wakati. Now, as you know, many Africans were taken to America and other places to be slaves. Unajua kwamba miaka za kule nyuma kuna Waafrika waliokuwa wanashikwa na wanapelekwa kule Marekani kuwa wafungwa. Now there are no more slaves in America. Lakini siku hizi hata kule America hakuna wafungwa. And even the masters told the slave come he has or she has to come quickly. Even when he or she is in the toilet, Hata kama yule anayeitwa ameenda kwenye choo kujisaidia. She has to finish very quickly and run to the master. Yaani lazima akimbie mbio aende aone mkubwa wake amemuita. Let me ask you this question. Hebu nikuulize swali hili. Is God our slave? Je, Mungu ni mtumwa wetu? Is he our slave? No. But he serves us more than a slave. Lakini Mungu anatufanyia kazi kushinda hata yule mtumwa. He is with us all the time. Ako na sisi kila wakati. Even when we sin. Hata kama tunapotenda dhambi. And he will come to us more when we love him more. Na atakuja kwetu zaidi tunapompenda zaidi. Doesn't God he really has a patient heart. Ya kwamba Mungu ana ule moyo wa subira. He's always patient with us. Yeye anasubira kwetu sisi. Now as Christians, most Christians have rejected I would say all Christians have rejected 
done in many ways. Sisi kama wanadamu wa Kristo tumemkataa Mungu katika njia nyingi zaidi. Sometimes we say I don't want to pray. Wakati mwingine tunasema hatutaki tuombe. I don't want to read the Bible. Hatutaki kusoma Biblia. I don't want to serve God. Sitaki kumtumikia Mungu. Or I don't want to think about you God. Ama sitaki kufikiria kuhusu Mungu. Just leave me alone. Hebu kaniache peke yangu. All Christians have rejected God in some way. Yaani wa Kristo wengi wamemkataa Mungu kwenye njia tofauti nyingi. Not just a few times. Sio tu safari chache, but thousands or tens of thousands of times. Lakini safari mingi maelfu na mamilioni na maelfu. But did God forsake us? Je, Mungu alituacha? Now in Chinese we have a saying kwenye lugha ya kichina wana msemo huu if someone for instance he chase after the girl and the girl says i don't want you he still chase after the girl wakati eh, chali, sorry chali. wakati mm, kijana anapomfuata binti au yule binti anamkataa ataendelea kumfuata we say that the person has thick skin on his face huwa wanasema kwamba huyo mtu ana ngozi nzito kwenye uso wake it means he doesn't have shame Inamaanisha kwamba huyo mtu ana aibu. Even when the girl say no I don't want to see you, he still want to come. Ukisafi kuna huku kujamaa, ijapokuwa huyo msichana hata hampendi, yeye ataendelea tukumfuata. In Chinese we say he has thick skin on his face. Kwenye lugha ya Kichina tunasema kwamba huyu mtu ako na ngozi ambayo ni nzito sana kwenye uso wake. I want to say in a positive way. Nataka kusema katika njia hiyo sawa. God has thick skin on his face when he comes to us. Ya kwamba hata sisi Mungu ana ngozi nzito upande wetu. Because many Christians have rejected him thousands of tens of times. Kwa sababu Wakristo wengi wamemkataa mara zaidi ya elfu moja mara zaidi ya elfu nyingi. If someone, you know, you say please come to meet to my home to eat and then he rejects you. If he rejects you many times, will you still be the friend to him? Je, mtu unapomkaribisha aje nyumbani kwa chakula, alafu akataye kuja. Huyo mtu utaendelea kuwa na urafiki na yeye? Ndio. But God never give us, gives us gifts up on us. Lakini Mungu yeye hajawahi toshwa na sisi. Isn't he beautiful? Je, hilo sio la kuvutia? He is very beautiful. Ni la kuvutia Mungu. I hope you learn to like God as I do. Naamini kwamba utajifundisha kumpenda Mungu. When I think of the love of God, I really like him. Napofikiria kuhusu upendo wa Mungu, ninampenda Mungu zaidi. I say there's no one like him. Nasema hakuna Mungu, hakuna mtu mwingine kama Mungu. There's a song. There is none like you. There's no one like Jesus. Hakuna mtu wa kufananisha na Kristo Yesu. His love is beyond our imagination. Upendo wake unashinda hata mawazo yetu. Always wants to bless us. Anataka kutubariki kila wakati. He always wants to give good things to us. Anataka kuleta mambo mazuri kwetu kila wakati. He does not continue to be angry with us. Yeye haendelee kukasirishwa na sisi. Whenever we repent, he's very happy. Tunapotubu Mungu anakuwa na furaha. And any little thing we do for him is very happy. Na chochote kile kidogo tunachomtendea Mungu anakuwa na furaha. And when we love him, we prepare for us great things in store. Na tunapompenda yeye atatuandalia mambo makubwa ambayo hatujawahi iona. And he prepare for us great things in heaven. Na atatuandalia mambo makuu kule mbinguni. And everything we enjoy now. Na kila kitu ambacho tunaburudika nacho sasa hizi. Like nature, kwa mfano maumbile, the food and water, maji na chakula tunachokula, our health, afya zetu, all these are good things. Mambo haya yote ni mazuri. And the move of the Holy Spirit. Na ule msukumo wa Roho Mtakatifu. It's always beautiful. Ni msukumo unaovutia sana. Do you like the peace and joy in Jesus? Je, ungelipenda kuwa na amani na furaha katika Kristo Yesu? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, I love you, Lord. When you love him, na really responds with peace and love. Unapompenda Mungu, yeye anaitikia katika upendo na amani. Can you remember God is not like people? 
unaweza kumbuka kwamba Mungu sio kama mwanadamu. When people hurt you, watu wanapokujeruhi, God doesn't hurt you. Mungu yeye huwa akujeruhi. Now when God speaks harshly in the Bible, Mungu anaponena kwa uchungu katika Biblia, it's towards people who don't repent. Ni kwa wale watu ambao hawatubu. But for people who follows him, lakini watu wanaomfuata, even when the disciples don't have much faith. Hata kama wakati wale wanafunzi wa Kristo Yesu hawakuwa na imani ya kutosha. Jesus said you are of little faith. Yesu aliwaambia nyinyi wenye imani hapa. But he means he gives them hope. Lakini aliposema hivyo akawapa tumaini. He said when you have Faith like a little mustard seed you can move the mountain. Akawaambia unapokuwa na imani kama mbegu ya haradali utaweza hata kusongesha milima. So God always give people hope. Kwa hivyo Mungu anapeana anapeana tumaini kila wakati. There's only people who don't repent that he will warn them seriously. Ni kwa wale watu ambao walikataa kutubu ambao basi atawapa ilahani ya nguvu zaidi. But if you have a pure heart to follow God and love God. Unapokuwa na moyo safi wa kumpenda na Mungu na kumfuata Mungu. He's always happy to bless us. Yeye ako na furaha kutubariki kila wakati. Now God has given me three kinds of prayer. Na Mungu amempa sampuli tatu ya maombi. You can use every day. We waweza kuyatumia kila wakati. This would build up your relationship with God. Can you write this down? The three kinds of prayer to build the relationship with God. Nataka uandike chini aina tatu ya maombi ya kutengeneza uhusiano mzuri wako na Mungu. The first kind of prayer is a prayer of grace. Maombi ya kwanza ni maombi ya ya neema. You can declare the grace and love of God. Unaweza kutangaza neema na upendo wa Mungu. We can say God is loving me. Unaweza kusema Mungu unanipenda. God is in front of me and behind me. Mungu uko nyuma yangu na mbele yangu. God is blessing me. Mungu unanibariki. God has a wonderful plan in my life. Mungu ako na mpango mzuri maishani mwangu. Then you rejoice. Wacha nifurahie. Like this morning if you have a heart to worship God. Kama asubuhi ya leo una moyo wa kumwabudu Mungu. God really want to bless you and change your life. Mungu anataka kubariki na badilishe maisha yako. So you say when I worship him he is very happy to bless me. Unasema ninapomwabudu ana furaha kunibariki. So that's a prayer of grace. I hope you remember this. Hilo ni ombi la neema natumai every day many time you when you are doing other things you can say oh the lord is loving me hallelujah kila wakati unapofanya vitu vyako nyumbani unasema kwamba mungu unanibariki hallelujah and then you can say i have reasons to be joyful na utasema kwamba niko na sababu ya kuwa na furaha and the second kind of prayer is prayer worship na ombi la pili ni ombi la la kuabudu lord i love you mungu nakupenda i worship you na kuabudu And I will use words that are very intimate. Lord, I need you. Na unatumia maneno ambayo yana uhusiano Mungu na kuhitaji. Lord, I hold on to you. Mungu ninakukamata wewe. I lean on you. Ninakuegemea. I like you. Nakupenda. I like to say words like this to God. Ungelipenda useme maneno kama hayo kwa Mungu. And the third kind of prayer that will help you. Na ombi la tatu ambalo litakusaidia is interactive prayer. Ni ombi interactive prayer. Okay, ni maombi ya mawasiliano. That means we can say whenever I love him, God is very happy to bless me. Utasema kila wakati ninapokupenda, uko tayari kunibariki. Whenever I pray to him, he will listen and will answer my prayer. Wakati ninapokuomba, unasikiliza na unajibu maombi yangu. Whenever I repent is very happy. Ninapotubu Mungu na furaha. And we can also have interactive action, not just interactive prayer, but interactive action. Na pia unaweza kuwa na matendo ya mahusiano. What it means is like this. Kile namaanisha ni hiki. Whenever I serve God, God is very happy. Kila wakati ninapomtumikia Mungu, Mungu ana furaha. Whenever I help someone to believe in Jesus, God is very happy. Kila wakati ninapoambia mtu kumwamini kwa Kristo Yesu, kila Mungu anakuwa na furaha. Whenever I serve God, God is very happy. Ninapomtumikia Mungu, Mungu ana furaha. Now these three kinds of prayer would help you to be joyful all day long. Na sasa hizi aina tatu za maombi zitafanya Mungu na hata wewe uwe na furaha kila wakati. I want to say that even though the Bible has taught us say 
Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Ijapokuwa Biblia inasema kwamba furahia katika Bwana sana nasema furahia. But I want to say I have met many Christians who are not joyful. Lakini nataka kusema nimekutana na wakristo wengi ambao hawana furaha. They say my husband is not nice to me I cannot be happy. Kama ni mama anasema kwamba mume wangu mimi hata hanipendi kwa hivyo mimi sina furaha. I'm not doing so well so I'm not happy. Mimi sifanyi vizuri kwa hivyo sina furaha. But this morning I tell you. Lakini asubuhi ya leo nakwambia Even if someone is not nice to you, hata kama mtu sio mzuri kwako, what they are saying actually are from the sinful nature. Kila wanachokizungumza kwako kinatokana uwasilia wao wa dhambi. When they say I don't like you, anaposema sikupendi, it's actually from the sinful nature. Hilo limetoka kwenye asili ya huyu mtu asili ya dhambi. And what they say is like garbage. Na kile ambacho wanakizungumza ni takataka we don't have to eat the garbage. Kwa hivyo wewe usikule takataka. When someone yells at us, we don't have to take it. Mtu anapokupigia kelele, wewe waachana na yeye. But the word of God, the promises of God, I'll take it. I'll eat it all. Lakini ahadi za Mungu na mapenzi ya Mungu yachukue kwa nguvu. Like this morning what I told you if you remember it, that every day we can rejoice in the Lord. Na mambo haya ambayo yamekuzungumza asubuhi leo kama utayakumbuka kila wakati utakuwa na furaha katika Bwana. But if someone speaks impolitely to us, na mtu anapokuzungumza katika nje ya upole, we can say I'm sorry. La kwa mfano aseme kisamahani. I'm trying my best to do it. Nitajaribu kufanya vizuri. We don't have to be angry. Tusiwe watu ambao tuna furaha because their anger is their sin. Kwa sababu Asira yao ni dhambi. I don't have to be I don't have to be unhappy because of his sins. Ya kwamba hau usikasirishwe kwa sababu ya dhambi. And I have I don't have the sin because he sins. Na sitaki nitende dhambi kwa sababu jirani yangu pia ametenda dhambi. Then we we can turn away the garbage. Hapo basi na maana kwamba uchafu wote tunaweka kando and always hold on to the promises of God. Na kila wakati kamata maagano na ahadi za Mungu. And I can rejoice. Na utafurahia. And whenever I serve God. Na unapomtumikia Mungu even a cup of cold water. Hata tukikombe kidogo cha maji baridi. God has good memory. Mungu ana mawazo mazuri. He remembers it all. Yeye atakumbuka yote. And he reward each one of our good works. Na yeye atatupa thawabu kwa mambo mema kwa pure hearts. Kama tuko na mioyo safi. Isn't God the most wonderful master and God? Je, Mungu sio yule mkuu wetu ambaye ni wa ajabu na mzuri zaidi? He's the most wonderful boss. Yeye ndiye basi tajiri. So, so when we know God is so beautiful, haiwa kwa sababu Mungu anavutia. Do you want to really love God more? Ungelipenda kumpenda Mungu zaidi? And how can you love God? Utampenda namna gani? By repenting of our sins. Kwa kutubu dhambi zetu. Know that sins are always destructive. Unjue dhambi kila wakati ni haribifu. That in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 Kwenye kitabu cha Wagalatia sira mm, sura ya sita na mstari wa saba. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. That means to, God, we cannot despise God. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Ya kwamba tusidanganyike kwa sababu Mungu hawezi akadanganyika. Na chochote ambacho unakipanda ndicho utakachokivuna. Okay, at the same time we say God is full of love. Na wakati huo pia unasema Mungu amejawa na upendo. And the same time we say God is most high. Na pia unasema kwamba Mungu ndiye mkuu zaidi. We cannot despise him. Hatuwezi tukamdharau. But whenever we say we ask him to forgive him or forgive us. Lakini tunapo tuna dhambi na tuombe msamaha atusamehe. So it's easy to please God. Kwa hivyo ni rahisi kumpendeza Mungu. Any time we sin we repent truly. Kila wakati tunapotenda dhambi unatubu kiukweli. And we pray to him much. Na tunamwomba Mungu zaidi. I love him much. Tunampenda zaidi. And God is always happy. Na Mungu kila wakati anayofurahi. And then when we obey him and serve him he's always happy. Tunapompenda Mungu na kumtumikia anakuwa na furaha. And I want to say this. Nataka kusema hivi. If you give your whole life to God. Unapopeana maisha yako yote kwa Mungu. Let God use your whole life. Wacha Mungu atumie maisha yako yote. God will know it and remember it. Mungu atajua na atakumbuka and he will bless you in every way. Na atakubariki katika kila njia. Let me ask you, you guess how old I am. Wasiti waulize, mnafikiria kaka mbaba kana miaka mingapi? Many people say I'm in the 50s. 
Hey, mama, una sikia kwa miaka mingapi? Let me tell you. She wants to gaze you. Okay. How? Ngapi? Thirty, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We we don't have time to care. Okay. Approximately fifty-five. Okay, fifty-five. Let me tell you. I'm sixty-seven. Would you tell me your niece, sir? Yeah. And I play tennis. Uta ni chapa ona kajama ba. Uijama ako na miya kasi tini na mingapi. And God has blessed me. I don't need eye glasses to read small letters. Na mumwa mbarik na rumacho mzuri hawezi yata kufa miwani yakizo. And God gives me strength to go to different countries. Na mumu pia amemupa amembarik na hawezi atembelea mataifa tofauti. And He provides for me that I can go to different countries. Na mumu pia yeye ni anepe na feda ambazo ni nazo kwenye mataifa. In my life, I've seen many miracles. Katika maisha yake ameona miuji zamingi. One time I missed a plane. Wakati mmoja alikosa ndege and I prayed to God na akaomba Mungu and the plane came back na ndege ikarudishwa and I asked the people how come the plane came back na akauliza watu mbona ndege ikarudishwa the person said well the plane just couldn't take off watu waliokuwa kwenye ndege wakamwambia ile ndege ilishindwa kupaa kwenda so it came back so, sasa ikarudi I thank God for that ana shukuru Mungu kwa hayo The plane cannot take off without me. Ya kwamba ile ndege haingeweza kwenda kwa sababu yeye alikuwa amechelewa kuingia. When we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, tunapotafuta ufalme wa Mungu na haki yake, all this thing will be added. Oh, mambo mengine yote yataongezewa tu. And your life can go higher and higher. Na maisha yako inaweza kwenda juu na juu zaidi. Every day you can enjoy God. Kila siku unadunda Mwenyezi, unajua kufunda Mwenyezi. That gives you strength. Na Mungu atakupa nguvu. Don't eat garbage from people. Usikule uchafu wa matakataka kutokana kwa watu. Don't eat the negative words from a heart. Usikule maneno ya kinyume inayotokana na watu. But learn the habit of always saying God is loving me. Lakini jifundishe tabia ya kusema kwamba kila wakati Mungu wewe unanipenda. I have strength from God. Na sana and have strength from God. Na uwe na nguvu kutoka kwa Mungu. And everything we do for God, na chochote tunachomfanyia Mungu. God is happy. Mungu ana furaha. So we are happy to serve God more. Kwa hivyo tutakuwa na furaha ya kumtumikia Mungu. Are you willing to serve God more? Je, uko tayari kumtumikia Mungu zaidi? He is the most wonderful master. Yeye ndiye tajiri wa ajabu. He is the most wonderful lover. Yeye ndiye mpenzi wa ajabu. Let us stand up. Hebu tukasimame. And respond to God. Na sasa ukamwitikie Mungu. Lord Jesus. Sema Bwana Yesu. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Bila kutusema Bwana Yesu. You love us so much. Upendo wako ni mwingi. You love us so much. Upendo wako ni mwingi. Then often we forget about it. Na kila wakati huwa tunausahau. And we neglected your love. Na sasa tunapokuja kwa ajili ya upendo wako. Please close your eyes. Haya tufunike macho yetu. Please forgive us. Funika macho. Please wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Bwana na ukatuoshe kwa damu ya Kristo Yesu. When we repent of our sins, tunapotubu dhambi zetu, you are happy to repent to forgive us. Wewe uko tayari kutusamehe. You are happy to bless us. Wewe uko tayari kutubariki. Lord, we want to enter your love. Baba tungelipenda tuingie katika upendo wako. We want to be strengthened by your love. Tunataka tutiwe nguvu na upendo wako. We want to respond to your love. Tunataka tuitikie upendo wako. We haven't loved you enough. Mungu hatujakupenda vya kutosha. Now at this point you say to Jesus. Sasa wakati huu nataka uelekeze mawazo yako kwa Kristo Yesu. I'm truly sorry for my sins. Na umwambie Yesu umemkosea akusamehe. And I want to love you more. Na umwambie Mungu ningelipenda nikupende zaidi. And I want to believe that you really love me. Na nataka kuamini kwamba kwa kweli unanipenda. And you have so many blessings for me. Na una baraka nyingi kwangu. Oh. Oh, yes, oh. Yes, oh. Oh.
for your wonderful love. Kwa upendo wako wa I want to live in your love. Ningependa kuishi kwenye upendo wako. I know that God is not like people. Najua kwamba Mungu sio kama mwanadamu. People don't have sincere love. Watu hawana upendo ulio sawa. But you have real love. Lakini wewe una upendo wa kweli. And you have powerful love. Na wewe una upendo wa nguvu. We want to live in your love. Tungependa tuishi katika upendo wako. We are by your love. Na tukachochewe na upendo wako. And change by your love. Na tubadilishwe kwa upendo wako. To rejoice every day. To furahia kila wakati. Put down all the garbage. Na tuweke chini taka taka yote. Serve you wholeheartedly. Na tukakutumikia kwa moyo wote. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. Say thank you. Say my asante. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. I love you with all my heart. Thank you Jesus. Oh. So wonderful way when you are just so wonderful way when you are just <laughs> Thank you Jesus Santa yes in Jesus name we pray by Jesus Christ us now amen 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 Let me ask you How many of you feel peaceful or joyful just now in the process of the prayer kwenye kile kipindi tunalipokuwa kiomba ni wangapi wanasikia kwamba umefarijika wanasikia wako na amani wanasikia wako na upendo peace or love or joy umesikia upendo furaha ikija kwenye moyo wako thank god god is so real shukuru mungu kwa sababu hands up endelea kuonyesha mkono wako tu let me ask you do you want to respond to god je ungelipenda kumitikia mungu do you want to love god more Ungelipenda kumpenda Mungu zaidi? Do you want to serve God more? Ungelipenda kumtumikia Mungu zaidi? I hope you all want to respond to the love of God. Natumaini kwamba ungelipenda kuitikia upendo wa Mungu. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise Hallelujah. the Lord! Amen! Hallelujah! Amen! God bless you all. Unga wabariki wote.